Well, happy Monday morning, friends. Father Frank Pavone here, speaking to you from the National Office of Priests for Life here in Staten Island, New York, with another installment of our You Have to Vote series. Uh, YouNeedToVote.org is the special website. We've set up just having a few brief reflections from me in audio and also in written form uh, about the fact that the duty to vote doesn't go away or doesn't become less simply because the election becomes more difficult. And as we know, we're in the craziest and in some ways most confusing election that we've ever had. A lot of people ask me morally, they're asking me as a priest, morally speaking, can they vote for a candidate who is morally objectionable? And, uh, and they're asking me because I'm a priest. And so I'm giving them an answer, and it's amazing how uh, so many people all of a sudden have theology degrees coming out of nowhere, because uh, if, they don't, if they have a particular political loyalty or they don't like a particular candidate or they have their own idea about what is morally correct or morally incorrect, all of a sudden their opinion counts more than the person that they're asking. And, you know... It makes us priests sometimes think, why did we go through all the rigors of seminary and studying moral theology if one answer is as good as the next when it comes to these questions? And so so very, very simply, we have to vote pro-life. And as I said in the previous video, morally speaking, when there's a Holocaust going on, that's the issue. Uh, can the government authorize the killing of a baby? The government is continuing to authorize, pretending to authorize, the killing of tens of millions of babies, and that has got to stop. And so when you say, well, I have to vote for the most pro-life candidate, the most pro-life candidate available, because again, as we said before, not that this is a, a decision on the level of a, of a menu order, but the moral principle is the same, uh, the practical principle is the same, that in life we're always choosing imperfect choices. So if I go to a restaurant and I don't see my favorite dish on the menu, does that mean I'm just going to sit back and say, well, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to order anything, or my car broke down, I have to go get a new one, I go into the, the car lot, uh, the, uh, uh, and the salesman shows me what's available, my, 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 the car perfect in my mind is not available, so I'm going to say, all right, well, then I guess I'll just walk from now on. We always choose the best of the available options, and that's what we do here in all these elections, and I'm talking about elections at every level. And people ask me, but, but what if the candidate is immoral? Listen, if the other one is worse in their immorality, and again, it starts with the right to life, okay, that trumps everything, no pun intended, but it starts with the right to life, yes, you can vote for someone who has sinned. And I answer that question as a priest. Yes, you can vote for someone even if you think they're corrupt if the alternative is worse. One of the, my priest, brother priests uh, uh, said to me recently, and he's correct, he said, you know, this is not a normal decision-making situation. This is not a normal moral choice that we have in, in, uh, in uh, this presidential race. It's like we're being held hostage and being forced to choose between what kind of poison we want to drink. But even in that situation, when you're forced to choose, you can choose the better of the two options. And when I say better of the options, we have a fundamental difference. We have one candidate and one party saying that they want to protect the unborn. You have to take that at its word and start there. Then we have the other saying, unrestricted abortion, and by the way, you need to pay for it. That when it comes to this particular fundamental issue, the, 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 let, don't let me hear from people as I sometimes hear, oh, well, you know, there's no difference between the two. The difference is clear, brothers and sisters. The difference is very clear. Now, I wanted to put, bring up another point here uh, as well, and that is that in these final days before the election, and this is true in every election, there is a serious psychological warfare that goes on. And the psychological warfare, the battle is in the mind. The psychological warfare is that people want to think, want, people want to make their, their, their opponent's supporters think that the opponent can't win. They want people to think the election is already decided. And I want to say something very clearly to you today, brothers and sisters. This election is not decided, and this election can go either way. This election can go either way. It is close enough. And remember, what gets counted on election night are not the opinions that have been expressed, not the questions that have been answered in polls. That's not what's counted on election night. 
not the amount of money that is spent, not the reasons people are voting or not voting. It, 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 none of that is counted. Not the, not, not the, the number of dollars spent, not, not the number of ads run. One thing only is counted on election night. The votes that are actually cast. That's it. And so right now, it is a question of turnout. It is a question of motivating people. People turn out to vote when they are motivated. And that's why it's a psychological warfare in these final days before the election, because people, each, each, each side wants to demotivate the other side. Oh, well, you can't win. This is already decided. Your candidate is too far behind. Absolutely nonsense. This election can go either way. Right now, we're in a situation where it's up to us to decide. That's the bottom line. It is up to us to decide. To go forward with enthusiasm, stop getting, you know, uh, 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 demoralized and pulled down by, oh, uh, where's my saint that I can vote for? Not going to find him. We vote for immoral candidates when we have to, when the, oper when the alternative is worse. And people who are for unrestricted abortion, I'm going to say this very clearly, there is nothing that parallels that in terms of gravity, in terms of seriousness, in terms of outweighing voting for that person, nothing outweighs that. And uh, so we need to go forward with motivation, with great confidence, and with the readiness to reach out to all those that we could um, reach and get to the polls and make sure that they vote. Okay, so uh, let me, uh, you know, usually with these live videos, I, I don't say much about the comments that are coming in, but I appreciate all of you that are leaving comments. And uh, let me just uh, um, uh, respond to one or two of them. Uh, one person asks, uh, what about those cheaters that have dead people voting? Yes, they are cheaters indeed, and we know that happens. Uh, and that's why, you know, one of the things that, um, well, first of all, we, we, we can take some consolation in the fact that folks, you can be sure, folks in both parties are very uh, on very high alert uh, to the to the reality of voter fraud. And I say reality; we know that it happens, uh, and it has been uncovered. It has been exposed, and there are things people can do to prevent it. There are people working very hard within the system. We need to keep reminding them of that. We need to keep reminding them that uh, our eyes are open, our ears are open. And one of the things citizens can do is to sign up to become poll watchers. Poll watchers, people who, who, who show up on election day and during early voting season as well, which we are in now, uh, at the polling places, are trained to be on the lookout for suspicious activity or illegal or unethical activity in terms of counting the votes. Uh, sign up to be a poll watcher or encourage others to do so. Uh, I know not, not uh, everybody is able to do that, but, but some of you may be willing to do that or able to do that. Look into it. Contact your local board of elections and ask about being a poll watcher, someone who can help ensure the integrity of the election. Obviously, that is always a concern, and I thank you, uh, brothers and sisters, for, uh, uh, for, for bringing that up. Uh, let me see if there's uh, other, um, other comments uh, that I can respond to. Um, one person said, you're so correct, father killing babies is quite a big issue. Not saying anything about the other issues uh, that the wrong can cause, voting with the entire family in November. Good. Yes, bring your family to vote. That is so uh, so uh, uh, so important. Um, yeah. And let's see here if there's anything else I can answer right now. What does the Pope and the Church make of this? Let's see. Cause so many people say they are Christians and they are still voting for a pro-choice candidate. You know what the problem with that is? The fundamental problem, I'm convinced, is that the word abortion has lost all its meaning. Uh, and so we, we, you know, we, when we say the word terrorism, that has not lost all its meaning because the events that have happened in our country and in our cities, uh, and I'm here right within visual distance of where the Twin Towers used to be, so I, right from this room where I'm sitting now in our New York office, you know, I look in this direction and I can still see in my memory the, the columns of smoke from 9-11. All of us know uh, what the word terrorism means. But the word abortion doesn't have that same kind of psychological impact. And so we need to pick up the slack for ourselves and for others by pointing them to what the actual uh, reality of this is. is an act of violence that kills a living baby. And this is why I always say to people, we need to look at the pictures, we need to read the descriptions, we need to see the videos, uh, because we're, we're asleep. 
And, and what the church and the Pope say about this, well, it's what Pope St. John Paul II said, where he says we have to look evil in the eye and we have to have the courage to call things by their proper name. Abortion is a war against the unborn child, as Mother Teresa said, it is itself a form of terrorism. Uh, I ask, what difference does it make if the instrument of terror against the innocent is, a, is, a, is an airplane or surgical forceps of an abortionist? Either way, you're deliberately taking an innocent human life. Let me just see if we have any more comments that I can uh, uh, respond to. Okay, very good. Um, Father, I have a message here from someone. I have been in problems because I am Mexican. I vote for, for life. Uh, people don't understand. Uh, well, God bless you for saying that. Uh, and we stand together across ethnic lines, uh, across all kinds of other divisions to vote for life. Everyone from every race, from every country, of every background has the gift of life, and that is the one thing that binds us all together. There's nothing more fundamental to defend in this election and beyond. So again, folks, let me close just again reminding you, psychological warfare, don't give in to the efforts of the other side to, to, to make you think that, uh, oh, we know how this election is going to turn out. I'll tell you something, this is the most unpredictable election cycle we have ever had. Nobody knows what the outcome will be. Nobody. It's up to you and me to decide it. God bless you. We'll talk to you again either later on or tomorrow. Thanks for all that you do. Remember to go to electionprayer.com, electionprayer.com, and spread as far and wide as you can that prayer to bring an end to abortion, that prayer to have our nation make the right choices in this crucial election. God bless you.